Hi everyone, welcome back. This is your how-to teacher, Sierra, and I am back with another video, another how-to video for you. Now this video is all about using the class notebook with your, with your students. All right, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through uh, how I use it personally, and then also how I have it set up for my students. And so I teach kindergarten. So I really wanted to be able to use class notebook, but I wanted to make it simple enough that the parents aren't stressing out even more over another thing to learn. And I wanted to make it easy enough that the students honestly would be able to figure this out after time, after they've seen it and used it enough, they'll be able to figure it out. Plus I also wanted to make things easier for me when it came to work. I didn't want it all over the place. I didn't want some email in it. Some, no, it's all going to be right here in their class notebook. So that's what I'm going to go through today. I am actually using the app, uh, the OneNote for Windows 10. And OneNote is the same thing as using class notebook, except for OneNote, you can have multiple notebooks. Um, but your class notebook that you set up in Teams will show up in your OneNote for Windows 10 as long as you're signed in under that same um, login information. So this is all through my school district. So that's why I am using it. So the first thing is I'm going to go over really quick. If you haven't set up your class notebook, it's perfect. That's great. It's actually going to be a little more helpful. Um, if you've never touched it and you go into your teams and you click that class notebook, it's going to come up and want you to set it all up. All you're going to have to do, especially if your district, your school or whatever has set it up for you, your students are already going to be populated into there. As long as they're in your team, your class, they're going to populate into your, the class notebook. So you don't have to worry about that. The only other thing that you would try to do is to, when you set up, they're going to give you options of these little tabs. There's already going to be four or five that are kind of pre-programmed there. You don't have to keep those. You can delete the titles of them and put in what you want. So what I put in for my students is I wanted a Monday file, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday file. That's what I wanted in mine. So it's going to be a lot easier for the parents to just click Monday. Here's everything that you're going to have to do for Monday and et cetera. I also did another file. So I have six total that has upload work. So if there's a time where they are doing something out of a workbook and they need to take a picture of it, they can upload it there. So they don't have to go to assignment tab and try to, I don't need them to do all that. Just put it in one spot. Um, the best rule of thumb, let me see if I can pull this up here, is to number them. I found that when I didn't number them, they put them in alphabetical order. And so it didn't go in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it didn't go in order of that. Like I had it, like I initially put in. When I put the numbers first, it ended up putting them all in numerical order. So that was a good helpful tip. Another thing when you're setting up that notebook, once you set it up, the, your students tabs, you can always add more, but you cannot delete. So I cannot go in and delete. It will let me, but they'll pop right back. So I can't take out any of these tabs once I set it up. So that might be a bit of a problem for people that have already set it up but it's still okay. You can still take from this a lot of information. So I have my students have one, two, three, four, five, six. I label them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All right, so that's just, if you haven't set up your class notebook at all in Teams, that would be your first thing that you're gonna do as soon as you click it. It's gonna have you go through. It's very simple. Just 
think about those things. Like I said, it's going to put them in alphabetical order or numerical order. So number, if you want them in a specific order, go ahead and number. And it's going to put them under every single student that you have in your team, in your class. All right, so I'm going to show you really quickly how I personally am using the class notebook. You'll have this teacher only section. Only you can see that section. And anybody else who is um, kind of an administrator onto your, on your team's account. So we had to add our principal and assistant principals in so they didn't have to come in as a student or a member. They're coming in as um, an administrator to the team, just like you would be, because it's your team. So they can see this, which is a good thing. And I'll tell you why in a second. But this is where I keep all of my stuff. And as you can see, I have like my class information. And what I did is maybe like three years ago, I bought one of those digital teacher planners on Teacher Pay Teacher. And it's the one where every year they upload and update it so you don't ever have to pay for it again. Unlimited updates. So that was awesome. Typically, I would print all of this stuff out, go get it binded, X, Y, Z, do all of that. It took forever to print on both sides. So I wanted to do a digital version. So basically, I just went into those PowerPoints that they send you and I screenshot each page that I wanted. And I uploaded them here as a picture, which is just insert, picture, upload, just like you would do in a Word document or a PowerPoint and you wanted to put a picture in. I just did that same thing. Then I right clicked on it and I set it as a background so nobody else can move it. So you're going to be doing that a lot. Just right click, set as a background. That way nobody can move it, but they can type on it. I'm not going to show you my general information as it does have my school and my personal information. But I took everything that they had in there. I can fill in my class list, my schedules, birthdays, parent contacts, passwords. I can put all of that in here. And I can easily do it by using the draw feature. So if you have a tablet with a writing pen, you can use the draw feature and actually write the names or write in your journal. If you have a smart board, which I did this on my smart board one day, you can pull this up onto your smart board, use that smart board pen, and you can write onto your OneNote planner, just like this. I pull this up and I can write on it and it will save it if I use, as long as I'm using the draw feature and picking a color or whatnot. And I can write on here and it will save. So that's amazing. If you like to handwrite still, like I still like to handwrite things, but now I can. So I have that for my class information. Uh, I have my pacing guides that I basically just inserted the printout. And when you do that, it will pop up. It will insert that PDF here and you can keep this or you can delete this, but it will pop up in here. So I have all of that that our district provided. Uh, let's see what else that I have. Oh, my weekly lesson plans. Now, this is why I said it, it's a good thing that like my principal and assistant principal are administrators on my account. Because if there was a need for me to be absent or whatever, and they had a sub or somebody was taking over, they could easily, the principal could come in here find my lesson plans and I don't have to write them all out. They're here. And again, I just took screenshots of what I already had and put them in here as pictures. Bam. And so I have all of this that I can use. I can write in it. I can type in it. If I want to type, I can type. I haven't set this as a background, but once I set that as a background, I can type in it. I can write in it. And it's very simple. I don't have to go through a whole trying to type out and email and do all of that to somebody so they can have my lessons. They're all right here and 
anybody can get to it that's on my account except for the students, which is great. All right, so that's the teachers only section. Really helpful. The next section that I'm going to show you, ooh, there we go, is the content library. Now this is where I upload assignments, papers, anything that I want to distribute to the students. So I have some things over here. I have the workbook, the link to the workbook for the students if they ever were to need it. Um, assignments that I'm issuing them, I put in here and then can distribute them out. And like this, they were gonna have to upload. So there's nothing here but a title, but it's in their file. And then I also have stuff. And then stuff is kind of where I put worksheets that I have. I put them in here and then I can push them out to the students. And so I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Now, what I chose to do, and this is kind of specifically, I did this because my students are young. They're five, you know, and their parents are trying their best. And I love my parents because they are doing awesome. I created this to-do sheet. So all my students have a to-do section for each day of the week. I just made this in PowerPoint. I just did a one of the frame boxes, put the lines in here, and typed in the four different subject areas. I then just highlighted it all. I right click and I click save as a picture. I saved it as a picture and came into the OneNote, made this page, I added a page, which is down here. When I added the page, I labeled it to do. I went to picture, I added it from a file. You also have the choice from a camera or online, but I had the file of course, and I put it in here. Once it was on here, I sized it to the size I wanted. I right clicked on it and made sure I set it as a background. That is so important to set things as backgrounds so the students don't accidentally resize or click it or delete it. It's not going anywhere. Once I did that, I was able to push that out to all of my students' um, tabs in their little section. And it's so easy, it's so easy. So again, I'm in content library. I just, I made this little section. I just called it stuff. And I want this to-do section with this in here to go to all my students. So you go up here to class notebook and you wanna distribute the page. When I do that, you have the choice. You can distribute the page, which means it's gonna to go to every student or you can do individual students or a group of students. I want it to go to each one. Now, I'm not gonna fully do this because I've already done this, but I wanted it to go to each one of my days of the week, so these five sections. So I did have to do this five times, but once you do it, it's, it's in there. I did Monday and you click it and it's gonna make a tab in their Monday section that says to do and has this on here. If you wanna fill this in and put stuff in this, you can and distribute it and it will be like that for everyone. So I just go here, go to distribute and it's gonna push it out to all my students in their Monday. I came back, did it again for Tuesday, distribute, everybody got it. Now, what I did do, and I'm gonna actually go back and fix what I did, um, is I should have put the information that I wanted to put in here first and then distribute. So what I think I'm gonna end up doing is you can come here and you can delete a page. And when you delete the page, you can delete that page that you pushed out. So I would come here, delete it from Monday, and then re-upload it with the information on here so I don't have to go in and do each individual students every time. It just saves a little bit of time. So this is gonna be really helpful and I'm gonna kinda try to show you here what I've done. 
And this is essentially what it's going to look like. Something very simple. So this is ultimately what it's going to look like on the student's end. They're going to have their to-do section. And then I'm just going to be uploading just pictures that I basically got from Google of what I want the students to do. Something simple. They know how to get here. They'll know how to get here. They can just go where they need to go, see it and go. Very simple. So they know in ELA, they're going to have to do iReady. They're going to do their boom cards. For this one, I added for the math, they're going to have a workbook page that they're going to do. And so when they see this, they're going to know to go to the math section. If there was ELA, they would have an ELA section. And basically when they go there, I've uploaded the workbook page that I want them to do. It's in there and they can do it right here using that draw feature again. They'll use that and they can use their finger or a pen if they have it and draw right on the worksheet. And then I can go in and check by going to that class notebook and review student work. I can go there and then check to see what they did. I can leave a happy face. I can put a star, whatever, and they'll be able to see that. Um, I'm going to show you really quickly how I got my workbook pages. It's really simple. I'm going to go back to stuff here. Okay. So, I pulled up, we use Eureka Math. So, I pulled up the lesson that I wanted them to do, the workbook page. And the easiest way that I could do this without having to use the snipping tool is I go to print. And then I have it print and save as a PDF. So, of course, you have all of these options to print to your printer, Google Drive. I just save it as a PDF and I pick the page that I want. So custom page eight. And then I just save it. And this is module one, topic B, lesson four. And so now that it's there, I just go back in. I insert a printout. Since that wasn't a picture, that was a PDF. I insert a printout. Here it is. And there we go. It pops in. And you can delete this if you want. It will stay here. You can move it. Now I'll make it just a little smaller because, again, their screens are small. So I don't want them to have to do too much, but it's still big enough that they can write on it. There we go. And I'm going to right click, set as a background. So now they can draw on it. They can type on it if they want it to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this out. So. I'm going to go to class notebook. I'm going to distribute that page. And I want this one to go to Friday. So I'll click Friday. It's going to give them a math section on Friday in their Friday tab. And it's going to have this picture. So now once that's clicked, I click distribute. And it Honestly, it doesn't take super long time. It takes eh, about 30 seconds or less. And once it does that, it's in there. All the students will have on Friday a math tab. When they click Friday, they'll see a math tab and it's done already. And it will have this image and it will already be saved to their background. So it's that easy to push it out to the kids. I can delete this page if I wanted to and do another one and push that one out. But once it's there, it's there. I can go in and I can distribute. If I didn't want that, I can delete that page, which is typically what I'm gonna be doing, deleting the pages just so it doesn't clutter everything up. But 
that is basically it. And I'll do the same thing if I wanted to give them an ELA page or a science. As long as whatever you name it over here in your content library, that's what it's going to be called in their folders. So I named it what I wanted it to be called for them. So they have that to do, the math, the ELA, the science, the social studies. Um, trying to figure out if you want to do an assignment. So let me see if I can pull up an assignment. I'm going to go to my Teams. I have my Teams page uh, pulled up here. So if I wanted to actually do an assignment, whether it's graded or not graded, you can always go here. And usually I only do this if it's something I want them to upload for me. Like it's an assignment out of a workbook or it doesn't matter. But this is the typically the only reason I'm doing an assignment as we don't necessarily have grades, at, at least in our district for kindergarten. It's either master, non-mastered. So there's really no need for me to provide actual A, B, C, D point grades. But I will for maybe projects, things like that, just so the parents can kind of see where their students fall in those categories. But if you ever wanted to create an assignment, you just go to create. We're running a little slow right now. That's okay. All right. And you go to assignment. And you enter the title of what it's called, any instructions. You are going to add the actual assignment that you want them to do in the resources. So if it is a worksheet that you want them to do, you can add it there. If not uh, something that they can upload, then what you want to do is you want to go to that class notebook. And let's say I wanted to make that math page that I pushed into there's an actual assignment. I wanted to give it a grade or it could be one that's a actual test that you want to give them. And you do want to take a grade of some sort on that. You Once it's in that content library, once you put it in there where I had all that stuff, you go there. You click your class notebook, you go to wherever it's at. Like I have that stuff category. And I had that math. That math assignment could now be that math page could now become an actual assignment that I can give points to or grade or leave feedback from if that's something you wanted to do. All you would have to do is attach it. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to. You just attach it and that page would automatically be inserted as an assignment. So you can grade it through the assignment tab. You can go in and check it through the class notebook like I showed you. Again, if you had another page, you could upload it and you could also still put it into that into your class notebook. Again, I'm not necessarily messing with this too much because they do get confused do I put it do I upload it to you Miss Carr do I put it in the notebook I don't want them to have to deal with where if everything's in the notebook then I'm good with that <laughs> I'm good with that but again if it's something like a, an assessment you want to give to them go ahead and put it in the assignments you can still you're going to see it and when you grade it in the class notebook or you check it, review that student, student's work, you're going to see it. You can make notes on it. You can make notes in the assignment section. I'm going to get rid of that. Just like this one, I had one turn it in. I had one here, turn it in. And I can go in, I can leave comments and give it back to them and let them know how they did on it. So you can do that. I'm not going to do this a lot because... I want the students to be able to do this eventually on their own. And this is just a little too much for them to get into right now. Maybe later, but right now, probably not. 
So everything for me is going to be in the class notebook. I would say 95% of what we're doing is going to be in the class notebook, uploaded to class notebook, and graded in the class notebook. So <laughs> I know that was a whole lot, but like I said, I'm trying to make it as simple for my little kids and their families and simple for me. So if everything is in that class notebook, for me, that's so much easier. For them, it's going to be a lot easier. So if you have any questions, feel free to make any comments. If you like this video, want to see more, which there's more coming, please go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. And I guess that is it for the class notebook. It was so much, but this is the super simple early childhood, kindergarten, pre-K, first grade friendly version of what I found is going to be most helpful for my family. So if you like it, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. I have more videos coming out very, very soon, and I will see you all later. Bye.